Feature flags, also known as feature toggles, are a powerful tool to help you improve your product. They let you conditionally run code, display components, and control access based on release conditions. There are three broad types of feature flags. The first is the release flag. These enable a feature for a percentage or category of user and let you monitor the impact. You can then use it to roll back if there are issues or roll out further when ready. They are also known as betas or canary releases. The second type is the permission flag. These grant or deny access to a feature to specific users or groups. They enable you to create and modify allow or deny lists for components, sections, and features easily. The third type is the experiment flag, also known as the A-B test. These compare two or more versions of a feature or component and monitor the impact on a set of key metrics. Once you discover which works better, you can use the flag to roll out the winning variant. These types of feature flags have many benefits and use cases, and in this video, we explore four of them. First, they help you ship faster and maintain momentum. Feature flags disconnect deployment from release, enabling developers to ship code faster. Instead of releasing code once it's deployed, it lives behind a feature flag and releases separately. This frees the developer from worrying about releases. Feature flags help developers merge and integrate their changes more often. This avoids stale branches and code, as well as improves deployment frequency. Feature flags can also be used to hand off the release to other members of the team, such as product managers and marketers. This can be especially useful for features requiring slow rollouts, customer communication, and usage analysis. Someone other than the developer can project manage the release. Feature flags improve releases and rollbacks, helping developers maintain their momentum. If there is a problem with the release, no code needs to be changed, the flag just needs to be turned off. Second, feature flags help mitigate risk. All changes and release have risks. Just because you are shipping fast doesn't mean you release recklessly. Feature flags create slow, smooth rollouts and quick rollbacks in case of an issue. By doing percentage, conditional, or tiered deployments, the rollout slows down. Flags can limit a rollout to specific infrastructure, regions, or users instead of everyone, everywhere, all at once. As the rollout progresses, the risk decreases as the team becomes more confident the feature won't cause issues. Slower rollouts provide time for problems to arise. This allows for discussion about changes, issues, and feedback before a larger rollout happens. We often combine feature flags with customer communication and feedback gathering when releasing a new feature. This limits the risk that the feature doesn't solve their problems as well. Even in the worst case scenario, flags work as kill switches to turn off the feature right away. This is especially useful for teams with slow deployments, such as those that go through long review processes to make changes like the App Store. Third, feature flags enable you to test changes in production. Testing in production lets you test changes closer to reality. It also prevents the need for specific testing and staging environments. The usage, data, infrastructure, integration, and environment are all closer to what users are actually using. For example, our team often rolls out features behind feature flags and provide access to the internal team or customers who ask for a specific change or fix. Using feature flags also lets you run experiments in production. They enable you to compare variants of features and components against real usage data and improve your product with the best one. Fourth and finally, feature flags act as permissions to grant or deny users access to features. They are a gate anywhere in code that you can turn on or off quickly without changing the code. They replace the need for custom user fields, admin panel modifications, additional checks, or complex permissioning logic. Engineers don't even need to be responsible for the feature because feature flags provide a centralized location for managing permissions and can be changed by non-technical team members. We use feature flags to run betas of new features and changes. When those features are ready for release, we change the release criteria to a rollout of some kind. To summarize, shipping faster, mitigating risk, testing product changes, and permissioning are the four top use cases for feature flags. Each of these can be tailored to your specific needs, but they show the power feature flags have to offer. As a bonus, Postdoc combines your feature flag data with product analytics, session recordings, and more. This enables better insights and targeting. 
That wraps up this video about benefits, types, and use cases of feature flags. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're interested in more info about PostHog and feature flags, check out our blog at posthog.com slash blog. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.